Hello, this is Joseph Zittle. Today's topic is twofold, freedom of speech and freedom of the press, both enshrined in the First Amendment to the United States Constitution, both very important, and as we'll see, sometimes come into conflict with each other. The reason for this video just now is a good deal of controversy between freedom of speech and social media. If you like today's video, please give us a like, subscribe, and click the notifications bell so you don't miss out on any of the other videos that we'll have coming up shortly. Down below in the description, if you like, you can buy me a coffee. And as you see behind me, I have some books for sale. And there's a link there that will take you to the Amazon page with a complete list. I hope you find something you like. So freedom of speech and of the press are both in the Constitution. Specifically saying, Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech or of the press. These freedoms are not absolute. Making threats, committing slander, committing libel are not protected under the First Amendment. Dominion Voting Systems was recently awarded a $787 million judgment against the Fox News Network for making false statements that Dominion's machines changed votes in the 2020 election. Evidence was presented from Fox's records that many of the top people knew it was false information but kept presenting it anyway. So this type of thing can be serious. So what is protected speech? I think I'll have some more. Nobody complained. Not very controversial. Protected by the First Amendment, but it doesn't need to be because nobody cares. If I say I'm in favor of a particular candidate, I'm protected under my freedom of speech. So is the person who is in favor of another candidate. And if we can exchange our ideas, that's part of how democracy works. Mr. Hitler had the idea that everyone would simply think, say, and do whatever he decided or else. And we know how that turned out. So I like our way better. But you don't have to listen to what somebody else says. But there is an exception that seems to always be an exception somewhere in the law or any place else that you don't have to listen. A judge corrected me on this that I met one evening, and he said there is a time when you have to listen, when you have an obligation to listen, and that is when you are on a jury. You have an obligation to listen to every word from the opening statement to the closing statement, every bit of testimony by a witness. That is your duty. So that is a place where you do have to listen. The problem becomes when we're talking about politics or something else that can be controversial, when someone, instead of arguing a point, says one way or another, shut up. To me, that means you have no right to speak. You have no right to say that. Or perhaps you have no right to speak unless you agree with me. All of those things are wrong, and that is not in the American spirit of how things should work in a liberal democracy, under a liberal constitution, specifically the Bill of Rights and specifically the First Amendment, as a liberal value of the American people. For our video, we do cover both freedom of speech and freedom of the press as they are associated and can come into conflict. Benjamin Franklin was in favor of freedom of speech, and he had a lot to say. I recommend his autobiography to everyone. The link for a free copy is below in the description. He was a publisher of the Pennsylvania Gazette. So freedom of the press belongs to him because he owns the press. Someone writes a letter to the editor. That is within his freedom of speech. Franklin decides which letters to publish and which to not publish. I was with the newspaper at one time, although in advertising, but I can tell you letters pour in. There just isn't enough space to publish everything, so decisions have to be made. And they can be made to present a balanced set of opposing opinions on an issue or to favor one issue over another. But at the end, while the writer has freedom of speech, the publisher has freedom of the press. We still have printing presses and a good deal of printed material. But much as audio, video, distributed through television, social media, and various individual websites. Our founders couldn't contemplate any of these things. So today we say that freedom of the press means the freedom of the media to publish. Of course, there are still some limitations, as mentioned in the Dominion versus Fox case. The law is still catching up with all this, but I see the basic principles as, one, you can submit what you want to social media. Two, the owners and the algorithms get to decide if it will be published or stay unpublished 
just as the newspaper publisher. Three, you can register your own domain and have your very own website, write what you want, and publish what you want. Still, be careful of the limitations of freedom of speech. Closing the topic for today, but I do want to hear your comments. Feel free. But in closing, here is a quotation attributed to Voltaire. 